Big Fraser Clark. Or is it though? Fraser the Eraser. That's, is that new? So that name, um, when I first turned pro, not even when I first turned pro, probably six years ago, um, Wikipedia, someone sent me a screenshot. How long have you been the Eraser? Oh, I never have been. <laughs> it's just, I don't know how things get onto Wikipedia, they just get there. Um, and then it sort of came to, to pro boxing on my debut, it was, it was the Eraser. But then I had a word and said, I've never called myself the Eraser, it's just like a Wikipedia thing, so can we just stick with a big phrase? Um, and then I got asked by Thomas the other day, um, he said, I've got to ask you, is it big phrase or big phrase the Eraser, or is it just big phrase? I said, I think we're going to stick with the Eraser, you know, it's, it's got a little ring to it, and I'm trying to not be like the boring dad now, and try and give a little bit of something, so big phrase, you know, it is what it says on the tin, but... The eraser, why not? Let's go with it. No, it, it does, it works. It's got a ring on it, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely does. No, Thomas asked me the same thing yeah. actually, and, and I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get to yeah. the bottom of that. Well, there we go. It, it's a good few months now since that first fight. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good thing because yeah. I think that kind of fight, you both needed mm. some time to recover. Mm. I mean, without revisiting that first fight too much because it's happened now, what was the aftermath like? I'm always interested in that. Mentally and physically. I think I can just go back to so straight away it was. This is what you call this is this is this is how you feel after a proper fight, because all my fights before that, I didn't never feel one hundredth of the way that I felt after that fight. So uh, I went to bed that night and I was actually I was a bit scared to close my eyes because my ears were ringing, my body was hurting. And you're just thinking, is, I kept thinking to it, I always kept, I kept thinking about it, is this what Mickey Ward and Arturo Gatti felt? I thought, is, is, was they even more than what we just did or was that the feeling they had because it, it's not a nice one? Um, but in terms of like the actual, the actual fight, it was brutal. So the next couple of days and weeks, you know, even just taking, taking the punishment we both took out, away from it, when you're a heavyweight and you're in a fight of that, that magnitude and that pace, it takes you a few days, weeks to, to just, your body to get over it, yeah. If you're me, you watch that and you think, wow, God, that was absolutely amazing. We've got to have a rematch. We need to see that again. More of the same, please. 12 more rounds of that. Mm. From your point of view, it's different because mm. you know that you can do it now, which is great, mm. but you know what it's like now too. Mm -hmm. so, so what's it like kind of, preparing yourself for the known rather than the unknown. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, in the first one, you're a bit in the, in the dark of, of what could possibly happen. In the second one, I know where he can go to, I know where I can go to. And I think the, the second this fight got announced, I had a word of myself and accepted that it probably is gonna go back to this place. I'm not naive and, and, and I sort of know a little bit about boxing, so I think stylistically we sort of fit each other, you know? I think it just, it just it, sometimes with fighters and in different fights, you just you just know the gel. It's the same as even with some of the sparring partners. I know it's going to be a bit awkward, so this is going to just, you know, you're going to land hands on each other. I know now that my, my style and his style is always going to, 100% always going to be a good, a good, a good show, so... I think I was accepting of it this time, which was like, listen, you're not training for, it might be a hard, hard 12 rounds. You're training for, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be brutal. You've been on the floor in the first one. You might, get, you might end up on the floor in the second one. You know you've got to get up. I just prepare for every eventuality I can. And with fights like that, one of the best things about boxing for me still is that it remains a sport where who wants it most is massively mm -hmm. important. That, that's gone out of some other sports to, to, to a degree, I think, for reasons of rule changes and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But do you look back on, on, on it and, and just going forward, do you feel like, yes, when it goes to that place, you've got to really want it, but also you've got to have that clarity to kind of, technique becomes even more important deep oh, in a fight? So much, Andy, like, the fighters that I, I admire the most, now, I look at your 
Usyk's, I look at your Baturbiev's, your Bivol's, your Canelo's. The good thing about them is in round 12, they often look like they look in round one. And I think that in itself is such an underrated skill and so hard. If you're a boxer, you know that's so hard to do. It's so disciplined to keep your shape, to keep your hand position. Anue is another one. Really, really doesn't... Chukor Stevenson, don't, they, don't really, they don't really drop until it's like, oh my God, these, these two are... They're out of shape. You know, who, anyone could win. They're the same the whole time. And I think it's such an such a underrated skill. And it's not that... They're not trying, it's just that you have to be disciplined. Like, the want, from me and Fabio, you know, you can just tell from that last fight, the want is, is, is something that's there, there for both of us. Like, 100%, we, we want to win. We want to win over each other, I think, as well. Like I say, it's this rivalry is not, not a personal rivalry. It's a very good sporting rivalry where I think we're going to bring the best out of each other again on Saturday. Um, but the want to win, the desire to win for me, I've said this a few times today, boxing is not something that I feel like just... I just, it's not just something that I love or not something that's just in the air and something I do. I feel it in my skin. It's, it's everything, everything I am. And my years of watching boxing, it's all been about watching winners. Like, second place in this sport, you just, you, it's, if, you're, if you're second place in this sport, you're a loser. It's really that simple. Yeah, it's, it, that's the real brutality yeah, of it yeah, for me in yeah. a lot of ways. There's, 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 a long way to, there's a long way to fall if, if, if you lose. Yeah. With regard to him, I always feel like after a fight, fighters give a really honest reaction. And I wouldn't say he's deviated away from it too much, yeah. but he's, he's kind of moved away from the path of it. It was a really, really good fight. Yeah. I thought I won, he thought he won. You know, let's do it again to... His messaging is slightly different now in, in the build-up to the fight, which, which isn't that surprising. Yeah. He likes to play a few games, yeah. doesn't he? Like I said, this isn't personal and... He's actually quite funny. I know he's an opponent, but a normal person. He's actually quite funny. He's quite witty. I look at some of the, I think I look at most of the interviews and think it's a good job. These interviews doesn't matter who's the winner or loser because he's about eight and zero at the minute when it comes to being witty and, and funny, which which isn't a problem for me. The result on Saturday night is what matters for me. But um, I think it's just if he actually believes that it wasn't it wasn't close, and if he believes that he won, and he believes that. The, the knockdown was because he was the superior fighter and, and I kept spitting my gum shield out and I did the low blow on purpose to try and gain a few seconds. If he believes all that, and just complete naivety because it's not the case at all. And just finally, it, it's, we talk a lot in boxing about journeys and destiny and, and a lot of fighters really buy into everything happens for a reason. And, but you look at this fight and it is kind of amazing really because... If it had happened when it looked like it was going to happen about a year previously, then you wouldn't be here now. I think I'd be working back on security. I had this. I've in my career, I've, I've I've done it a few times. There's a few decisions that have happened. I can remember leaving the, the GB podium squad in 2013 and being moved back down to the development squad because I wasn't ready and I was so frustrated and upset. I can remember a few years later, I went up to Rob McCracken and I said, really good decision. You know, I was, wasn't mature enough, got moved back down. My career went up from then. I even had a couple of words with Ben Shalom more recently about the, the first fight and the pullout and stuff. Not that I didn't feel I was ready. I thought I was ready at the time, but was that my, was that my ego? Was that my, was that my hastiness of wanting to be involved so bad? Maybe it was the best decision that someone's ever made in my career because maybe I wasn't where I thought I was in terms of professional, um, professional stature, the rounds, the experience. Maybe I needed someone to do that for me in order to be able to provide the performance of last time. And maybe that decision back then is going to be the reason why I am the fighter I am come Saturday night. It'll look like a great decision if you win. And that, and that, as you said before, that's the game you're in. That's the game I'm in, Andy.